When you look at not only Amsterdam, but cities all over the world, there is this kind of classical experience that people have, an expectation that people have of what a relationship looks like, which we just need to adapt and grow out of. As a member of the LGBTQ plus community, are there extra things that you have to keep in mind when you're traveling to somewhere new? Safety, definitely safety. You become hyper aware of the fact that there's certain countries and certain cities, certain areas where um, you need to be more careful. And for me as a woman, there's an added kind of fear of putting myself in an unsafe position. Um, in particular, actually, because my partner is uh, non-binary. And so when you are walking on the street as two people who are perceived as female and people then clock my partner as being what they think is female, um, the anger that comes from that confusion can be significant. And that puts not only them, but me in danger as well. So these are things that you think about when you cross the street on a daily basis, but especially when traveling. Um, there's a lot more that goes into looking for where you can actually stay. One thing that is important is that during the booking process, that there's no gendered terminology. You know, I don't want to have to fill in, first of all, whether I'm a missus or a miss, because it's neither here nor there. And if you do insist on having some kind of labeling system, ensure that it is broad enough that it includes also people who identify as neither or as both. When I come into a hotel or other kind of accommodation, especially with, for example, a male travel companion, there's immediately an assumption that we must be a couple. And that's awkward on a number of levels because, well, it's just awkward to have that assumption imposed upon you. But then what also follows, and that's the part that bothers me possibly even more, is you see that dynamic change. When it's assumed that we're in a relationship, the staff will generally direct all questions to him and I'm just kind of this background um, actor in, in, in this situation. And um, those are things that are just genuinely uncomfortable. On the flip side though, when I have traveled, for example, with an ex-girlfriend, um, we are received first as being friends because surely we must just be friends. And over the course of our interaction, the staff or other guests staying there will realize that actually, oh, this, this is a romantic relationship. That's also where a lot of discomfort arises because you see the attitude change and therefore you're uncomfortable and therefore you don't really want to be there anymore. I think that when, when you look at um, the LGBTQIA plus community and its reception and how different companies, organizations, people are going about it, there's a lot of talk but not a lot of action. And so I think with a program like this, it will tangibly contribute to creating these safe spaces. The more partners um, ultimately sign on, the more safe spaces essentially are being created, not just in one location, but globally. If there's an accommodation partner who aren't sure whether they would want to participate, I would ask them why they think that they're done learning. A big part of all of this is recognizing that you don't always have all the answers. And so if someone shows up with ideas about how you can better yourself, I think that you need to do that. I think that you need to try because I think that that's what you owe to the community. <laughs>